My name is Monica Gleberman, and you're listening to Silence On Set Podcast. On today's podcast, we have the cast of Sex Life to talk about its upcoming season. Season two hooks its fingers and beckons us back into the wild world of Billy Connolly. The series continues to map Billy's shifting connections to her family, her past, including her devastatingly handsome ex Brad, and her future. So to talk about where the season goes and that crazy finale, so don't listen to this if you haven't watched it, but to break it all down, here's Sarah Shahi, Adam Demos, and Margaret Odette. I wanted to start off first with Sarah and Margaret. For both of you guys, you know, throughout the show, the kind of go-to is, you know, almost like at times not like man's friend, right? Like that we want to try to get as much as we can done and kind of do it all. Mm -hmm. Each character kind of goes through different ways of trying to accomplish doing it all. Do you think doing it all is even remotely attainable? And do you feel like your characters reach that this season? I think doing it all and having it all are an impossibility (laughs) but they are a worthy pursuit and I think in terms of framing it's really about recognizing that doing it all or having it all doesn't have to mean doing it all alone and um so I think for Sasha in season one a lot of that has to do with her friendship with Billy and that being a very important soulmate in her life and then in season two she's got to explore this other kind of soulmateship with her love partner and her love interest and so I think that it's really a matter of understanding that having it all doesn't look like what the Hallmark card might express it as, but it's certainly achievable in varying degrees at varying times. I think, you know, like those things to me are very, like they different, they differ per the person that is chasing it, right? Like someone's version of having it all and all of that other stuff is very different from the next person's definition of it. And also, you know, um, success, success is also such a a personal thing too Mm -hmm. between people. I think Billy starts off as somebody who, yes, she wants she wants all of that. The wish fulfillment is very high and she does have this, you know, unabashed appetite. And I really, I personally can relate to her appetite and inspired by that as well. I do think that, and this is just a lesson for myself, I think, you know, to Margaret's point, it is like, you do need help. You know, it's like for myself, I am trying to manage like my time a little bit better. I'm a working single mom and just trying to see where my energy is best served is something that it's taken me a long time to sort of come to the realization that I cannot do it all myself Mm -hmm. and some things I have to let it go like the Mm -hmm. kids are not made of glass Mm -hmm. it's okay if the dishes sit in the sink for tonight those kinds of things it's taken me a long time to get comfortable with them and I think I'll probably still try to get even more comfortable with them but are you going to do the dishes probably not okay now that you're so I was going to say he should step up and go oh I'll do it don't worry about it no he does do it actually but my point is is that my point is it's such a changing, you know, thing, you know, depending on, I don't know, the year and whatever. And I think for Billy, she comes to the realization at the end, which is like, she says, you know, this is not the fairy tale that I imagined, but it's a fairy tale unto itself. And I think that that's also important, you know? And I think as long as you're happy, I don't know, for me, as long as I'm happy, as long as my loved ones are happy, healthy, my children are happy, I'm pretty good. Life's gravy. So for Adam, Sarah, for Brad and Billy, they have this magnetic pull to them, you know? I think sometimes you could be in love with somebody, but it's not right now. Mm -hmm. So what do you think makes them right or what changes that would make them right later to make them kind of get together? I think they explored all avenues outside of each other and tried to fulfill themselves in every other avenue. Mm -hmm. And quite clearly they could not, they couldn't, you know, it's like that's, they always came back together, but they explored every, they tried, you know, they kept missing each other like ships in the night, but yeah, it's, um, they left no stone unturned. I think they're a pretty good example of, you know, what it means to surrender. You know, it's like, so they were, they both finally accepted, you know, that they were not going to be with one another. So then they both, you know, stopped putting energy towards something that was unattainable. And they started being present and with their own lives and just experiencing life and moving on and, Mm -hmm. you know, surrendering to that which was in front of them. And, you know, as so the universe would have it, and as did the writers (laughs) of the show, 
that is when in the end you can kind of create that which you can manifest what you want you know in a real sense is when you finally accept what's in front of you and that you know and also like you know the season had to end and you have right. to get these two together at some point <laughs> whatever so yeah. Yeah. it had to have a different ending than season one for sure right exactly <laughs> and adam for you for brad i feel like he goes through a very significant i mean everyone does but for him in particular it goes through a very significant change and yes i'll, I'll be airing this after so he has a child and married yep. and all these things so for him what was that like for you kind of showing his growth and then being ready because he's so different and you see it on when you watch it and I go oh they're finally on the same page like they're gonna work that's all she wanted from him in the first season or she wanted originally and he just had of all of his stuff that he needed to get out of the way and work through and he's passed you know uh, issues with his father and his childhood and all that sort of stuff so I think season two towards the end you see the example of all the work that he's put in and the peace that he's found in himself that he's gone through that and he's okay at where he is and he's actually not chasing anything outside of himself like when his company was almost to draw his dad in or his company was almost like how he felt his self-worth and he realized as soon as he had that child that that's what he wanted to do he was running so far away from something that he should have been running towards and so it's nice and then when she sees him it's almost like he's so centered in himself and that's where you know maybe a long time coming but I think it was perfect timing in the end yeah and for all three of you were you happy because you know even Margaret for your character you're with a man yeah. kind of go up and down and figure all of that out and you know Billy's character you know obviously she's going through ups and downs and trying to figure out what do I do and who do I date uh Brad going through being a father and how do I move through all of this stuff you guys do it and then you get to this finale are you happy with where all three of you ended up yes I am happy about the ending I'm happy about it because I think it shows a lot of growth for Sasha I think she ends in a place that I certainly never expected her to end up and you know whatever happens thereafter I feel like the life that she will continue to build will be exciting and varied and challenged by this relationship she's in and um, hopefully nurtured by it so I think I think it's a really fun, cool, and very different place that she ends up than I expected. Yeah, and for myself, I mean, I'm I'm a audience member too when it comes to watching Brad and Billy, and I was, you know, very drawn to them. No, I really liked them. I wanted them <laughs> to get together, us, I, whatever. And so, yeah, so the ending did make me happy as an audience member. Like, it was good to see them together and stuff. And and it's funny because I just thought of this that like there's a Nora Ephron quote where she talks about how women's desires. It's like you know they want that, you know, the greatest desire is to be married and then followed by, you know, the next greatest desire, I want a divorce, you know, and it's just like, and it's such a funny thing. And, you know, to be so conflict free, I think in the end is a little weird, but I love the two of them getting married because I do want them to be together and to explore life as a couple with children together. And that presents a whole bunch of other problems that the two of them aren't even aware of yet. But that'd be funny if like she was, they were at the altar and she's, I mean, she's like, I want a divorce. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Right. laughs> Before like, you get married. Brad might run. <laughs> He's like, I'm done. Now, come on, He's give like, me a that's break. Not. And by the way, yeah, like if if it doesn't work out, it it doesn't work out, and that's fine too. I mean that for Sasha's story, you know, like the, I'm happy for the happy ever after, but also if it's not ever after, I think people need to become need to be embraced that more and be okay with that and just live life as fully and honestly as you can. Yeah, I love it. Like for Sasha, I feel like it's her intentional decision, and then if that works out great and then for Billy and Brad it's kind of like magnets and we saw it coming we wanted it but again we want it but it was a collective decision and that's what I love about the show is its decisions it wasn't like you know oh they just happened to be together you know everyone got to make a decision but I it's kind of cool to see the four main characters I mean two seasons just high stakes you know emotions all over the place and the four of them are all kind of at peace uh, at, at the very end it's like oh wow they've been through the ringer and they just you know cooper included he's like a he's piece getting of too. Yeah. you know it's like it, it yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, you can it, stop it, Vogel's not here, but it's like, I mean, he's so awesome as Cooper, but he's a piece too. It's like the four characters. This is a crazy ride. Not to say it's over, but the end of the season, they're all, they all, they all can settle nice down if no one needs to, yeah, yeah. yeah they all, cry or yeah. stress out. Or, and they're basically all on honeymoons. <laughs> so yes, everyone's yes. calm. Yes, everyone, yeah. Yeah. Everyone gets a breather. One of my last questions is just a fun one, but obviously Billy and Brad get matching tattoos. Well, not matching, but 
he gets two Bs, right, on him. That was in season one. Yes. So I want to know for the three of you whether you want to talk about your character and who your significant other is on the show or whatever. But what matching tattoo or animal would you get in relation to someone you're dating, whether it's your character on the show or in real life? Well, I already have a tattoo <laughs> in a place that only <laughs> the person Right I was gonna say, does Adam not know? <laughs> oh no, Adam knows. Yeah, Adam like, like yeah, that's know. not my business to talk about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Adam is the only one who gets to see the tattoo that I have. So yeah, I love tattoos. I love tattoos. I've got like I don't know, forty-seven. I've got so a lot. Roughly. We got a bunch. Of, we got a it's few. Well? Mr. Koo, uh, his name is in Toronto. Awesome tattoo artist. But we um, when we wrapped first yeah, season, me. second season, we got a couple of him. He's he's yeah. Great. They loved me asking, saying like, "Hey, can I go in the middle of filming and get a tattoo?" Like I was like, "I got." to go guys my tattoo artist is about to leave they're like what I'm like you don't understand yeah that ran over real well so yes i have tattoos and with yeah. cam and sasha well, cam and you... sasha hmm, what tattoo would they get probably something connected to it's a scene that was cut but they take this really important trip to italy or they were, they were meant to take this really important trip to italy that was supposed to be a major turning point in the relationship and so i think they would probably get i don't know a, a tattoo of the the trevi fountain or something or something connected to that that trip that they took together spaghetti and meatballs yeah pizza a little bus <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed listening to sarah adam and margaret talk about this upcoming season of sex life the show will premiere on netflix on march 2nd so make sure you go and check it out and don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you're updated on all of our latest podcasts and head over to our youtube channel hit subscribe so you're updated on all of our video content